Alright, hello and welcome back everyone. In this video we're gonna go over a problem in which we're gonna uh, tackle pressure drop in a packed red reactor. So pause the video for a second and give it a read. Alright, um, I'm back and I hope you guys have given this problem a read, so let's read it together. So we have a uh, the following reaction. Two moles of A react to give one mole of B and one mole of C. Alright, good. And this is to be carried out in a packed red reactor. All right, very nice. The reaction is found to be first order with respect to A. So that means the rate expression is going to look something like this. All right, we know that. Good. All right, you need to determine the weight. The weight, um, and by weight, I just mean the mass. All right, I'm just going to... So uh, if, I, if, I, if any uh, physics major is watching this, um, I apologize. I'm just going to... I'm just gonna rephrase this as mass of the gap, mass of the catalyst, because that's what we need. Because, uh, oops, my bad. Um, all right, first order mass of the catalyst. That's what we need. Uh, required for seventy percent conversion. All right, good. So we have our desired conversion, and the next step we have the required info, process info. So inlet pressure, which is denoted by P naught is going to be equal to 3 atm the pressure drop parameter all right this parameter is going to be used in argon equation so this parameter is used in the argon equation we're going to go through that and we have the catalyst density all right we have the void fraction of the bed the void fraction is the volume of empty bed divided by the total volume cross-sectional area of our tube all right of our packed bed cross-sectional area inlet volumetric flow rate good and the rate constant and the uh, we're going to talk about the units of the rate constant in, in a second all right so let's let's start off with our design equation all right so let's start let's begin our solution design equation for a packed bed and the uh, design equation is going to be uh let me okay so and keep in mind that i'm following the notation used by dr fogler R A prime. Now this prime, this dash, this indicates that the units of this expression are mole per kilogram of catalyst second. All right. We're no longer using mole per liter or mole per vol mole per meter cube. So now we're doing mole per kilogram of catalyst. All right. So uh, okay, uh, this can be re rewritten as inlet flow rate, inlet volumetric flow rate times the inlet concentration times the derivative term and negative rate expression all right moving on to the rate expression rate law we know our reaction is first order so our rate law is going to be negative r a equals k prime c a and what's special about k prime all right uh, these units right here so the concentration the units if i do a dimensional analysis on the right side, the units of concentration are going to be mole per volume, okay? And I want my rate expression. I want my rate expression to have the units of mole per kilogram of catalyst seconds. So in order to do that, I'll need the units of my rate expression are going to be volume divided by kilogram catalyst second. That way my dimension my dimensional analysis works out okay so the units of k keep that in mind next up uh rate law now we need to do the uh now we need to play with the stoichiometry good all right we're moving up in the world ladies and gentlemen stoichiometry so the concentration of a now this is where we're dealing with gas phase reaction we're dealing with gas phase reaction with pressure drops. So you're going to include the 1 plus epsilon x term, which accounts for the change in volumetric flow rate due to change in total moles as the reaction proceeds, and lowercase p. The lowercase p, this uh, accounts for the uh, variation in pressure. Okay? Lowercase p, that's just equal to, hold on, I'll just show you right here. Lowercase p is equal to the inlet pressure divided by the exit pressure okay all right um we know that epsilon let's uh let's uh focus on epsilon for a second let's focus on epsilon for a second epsilon is equal to the inlet 
mole fraction of a times the delta parameter and I hope you guys remember what the delta parameter is so let me just uh, if you don't let's just uh, follow along and you'll see what it means so the reaction two moles of a react to give b and c so per, per mole of a per one mole of a this is how the re rate expression this is how the equation the chemical equation is going to look like my balanced equation okay um so if you see now delta all right delta is the uh, number of moles the number of uh, the change in total moles per uh, one mole of a being consumed and in that case it turns out to be zero which means epsilon is equal to zero and that makes life a lot easier so that means that our stoichiometry is going to have the following expression see a naught one minus x times lowercase p all right good now we need to account for p now we need to account for p lowercase p and to do that we're going to be using the uh, argon equation the simplified form of argon equation so the argon equation says dp dw is equal to hold up give me one second is negative alpha over 2p times uh, I believe it's t naught but we're um, sorry sorry 1 plus epsilon x and this is the argon equation for isothermal okay we're dealing with isothermal operations right now all right okay very good so once again epsilon goes to zero dpd dub the derivative term comes out to be so this is a separable ode this right here is a separable ode and you can just separate variables and solve this which what I, which is what i'm going to do right now so the limits the now keep in mind the limits for p p is the ratio p is the ratio of inlet pressure to outlet pressure and at the beginning of the reactor this ratio has to be equal to one because both pressures are equal to each other and at the exit that's just going to be well we don't know what, what it is at the exit so upon integration to p sorry we get p square minus one is equal to um, minus alpha w and p becomes equal to one minus alpha w all right so now we have an expression for p now we can just combine that oops now we can combine that with combine it with stoichiometry and let's say uh, if i remember my expression for stoichiometry it was just ca naught one minus x times p all right p you just you're just gonna you're going down all right good so ca equals ca naught one minus x okay uh, i hope you guys are following along because um i am really hoping i don't make a mistake so now we now we can combine everything now we can combine the uh if we go back to our design equation our design equation was sorry my bad inlet flow rate times inlet concentration dx dw is equal to negative rate expression right and now we have the rate expression the rate expression was the rate constant multiplied by ca and ca well we have an expression for that we get va naught ca naught let's just uh, now we're just grinding through this all right and make sure my, make sure you're not making any silly algebraic mistake that's going to be very fatal that's not going to look good all right and here i can cancel ca naught on both sides and the uh, final differential equation the final ode that i'm gonna get let's uh, use a different color for that this is gonna be my final ode okay and this is actually a separable ordinary differential equation so upon separation of variables this is what you're gonna get we're gonna have one minus x the conversions on one side k over v naught k over v naught are constants okay k does not change for isothermal operation k does not change for isothermal operation 
Okay. Mm, all right. My bad. And 1 minus alpha w, 1 over 2 dw. And now you can just integrate. So this goes from the left the left side goes from 0 to your desired conversion and the right side goes from 0 to the uh, weight the, the the w w means the mass of the catalyst that's the notation used by fogler all right now the left side just becomes natural log of 1 over 1 minus x i'm going to skip a few steps okay now this in, these integrals are actually these integrals are actually performed these are all these have already been performed in the tables in the appendix a of fogler appendix a of fogler fifth edition the one that i have fifth edition so appendix a has all these nice integrals so you, so you don't have to if you don't remember integral calc you're good you don't, you don't have to worry about it and this comes out to be well, if i'm doing my if I can read my tables correctly, this comes out to be 2 over 3 alpha times 1 minus 1 minus alpha w 3 over 2. Okay, let's see. Desired conversion, we know. We need 70%. The rate expression, that's been given to us. Volumetric flow rate, that's been given to us. Alpha, okay, we need to talk about alpha for a second. What the hell is alpha? Okay, we've been talking about alpha all along. Alpha is actually a lumped parameter. So you have 2 beta naught over cross-sectional area, catalyst density, 1 minus the void fraction times the inlet pressure. Okay? And what is, now you might be wondering, what is beta? What is beta? Beta itself is a lumped parameter. Beta itself is a lumped parameter for Ergon's equation. Please refer to chapter 5. Please refer to uh, chapter 5 of Fogler, 5th edition, to learn more about that. Lumped parameter for argon equation. So let's see. Um, we know we actually, uh, let's uh, make a list of what we've been given. We've been given the rate expression, 0 0.05 uh, meter cube per kilogram catalyst second. Uh, we've been given white fraction. White fraction is equal to 0 0.4. What fraction is equal to 0 0.4? The inlet volumetric flow rate. The inlet volumetric flow rate is also given, 0 0.5 meter cube per second. Good. Um, the uh, beta, beta naught, the lumped parameter for argon equation is also given at 0. Point, let me go back and check. Uh, I think it was written. Oh, yeah, 0 0.25. Okay, 0 0.25 ATM per meter. What else? We know the uh, cross-sectional area. That's been given to us. Very good. We know the uh, density of the catalyst is 2400 kilogram per meter cube. Okay. And the inlet pressure. The inlet flesh pressure was 3 atm. Good. So everything on the uh, le everything on the right side can be used to determine everything on the right side can be used to determine alpha okay and once you have alpha well using everything on the left side you'll be able to get the uh, desired convert you'll, you'll be able to compute the uh, required mass of the catalyst and this is a non-linear this is going to be a very non-linear equation so this right here let me copy that All right, if, uh, as you guys can probably see, this is going to be a very nonlinear equation. And feel free to use goal seek or solver or your favorite numerical method to uh, evaluate it, okay? Um, and even your, uh, I, even if you have a good uh, good calculator, a good Casio or a good TI, they probably, they probably have a function where you can use solver for a nonlinear equation. So please um, do some research, look that up. And I'm gonna solve this for I'm gonna solve this for a conversion of 0 0.7. Okay, I'm gonna solve it for 0 0.7 and I'll leave the answer in the comments and see if you guys get the same answer as I did. Alright, so just to give you a quick recap. Start off with the design equation. Start off with the design equation, rate law, stoichiometry. All right, delta was equal to zero. That depends on the uh, that that depends on your uh, chemical reaction 
okay everything was in gas phase everything was in gas phase i hope you guys picked that up the argon equation okay argon equation you can get an analytical solution if you have isothermal operation and uh, yeah so this and epsilon is equal to zero that makes your uh, life a lot easier so now you have a so here you had a uh, expression for lowercase p combine that with stoichiometry okay good and then you combine stoichiometry with the design equation and then you just uh, grind through the mathematics perform your uh, integration and now you just plug and chug well not necessarily plug and chug you, you still have to use a uh, numerical method you'll probably have to use some numerical methods to evaluate the final nonlinear equation 